Today we are working on factoring trinomials. First of all, um, let's just review what is a trinomial. Trinomial is an expression where you have three, um, three terms. So it is um, ax squared plus bx plus c. And it's always written in this order. x squared comes first and the number that next to x squared is a. Then it's x, number right next to is b, and then it says c uh, in, the x, in the end, which does not have any variable. So we are doing the factoring. Factoring technically, technically the other name for um, division. So these are not normal number that I can divide that easily, um, and it needs to be written with the x, so that's why we call it factor. The process that you are learning today if you're in the a group you are working with swing method it's called um what's the actual name yeah it's called swing swing and divide and then if you're in the b uh, we are using the grouping method which is a little more technical blank is a useful way to solve certain types of equations and simplify expression among other things i believe the word factoring go over here there are a lot of different factoring methods. Um, this one is called swing and divide. So you probably are familiar with this. This is X puzzle. So you already know how to get the top number, which is A times C, and you already know how to get the B number. Then we also know how do we get these two numbers, three and 10. So we are using this method today in order to factor it, which is super easy. Because we are writing equivalent expression. It is always possible to check your answer. You can do this either by multiplying or you can actually, the easiest one would be graph your numbers, sorry, equations in the Desmos calculator and they should, they should be overlapping or same lines. So that's another way um, of checking your answers. It is possible that a trinomial may not be factored, so you might not have any factors and you will know when you are going to solve the X puzzle. So this happens when X puzzles cannot be solved. So we are going to look at that examples as well by the end of the notes. So your process is pretty easy. Um, it's kind of fun, it's not that technical. So I'm not gonna go into very much detail of the X puzzle because you worked on it yesterday. We're just gonna go over the swing and divide process. First thing, let's copy our numbers, A, B, and C. A is one. B is 8 and C is 15. My X puzzle, I have 1 times 15 goes on the top and B goes on the bottom. I need two numbers. So that two numbers would be 3 and 5. So 3 and 5 are my factors here or my numbers in this X puzzle. Now, first thing you do after you solve the X puzzle, what you're going to do is you're look at the A value. It's one. So what you're going to do is you're going to technically divide this by one and see what you get. Three divided by one is three and five divided by one is five. So this process is very easy. If you are doing division by one, the number stays same. So this is not difficult when you have A value as one. It is a little technical when you do not have a value as one, um, which is over here, the example. So I have two numbers. All you have to do is you have to put two set of parentheses like that. And all you do is you put X and whatever the number you get over here. This is positive three, so you're going to write X plus three. And then this one is positive five, so you're gonna write X plus five. And there you go. This is my complete factors. So just one tiny more step after the X puzzle. So you should be able to do number um, two example by yourself. I am going to help you with number three, I guess. Number four, you should be able to do by yourself as well. So first thing I need is I need the X puzzle to be solved. A is nine, B is 24 and C is 16. 
Now this is a longer number multiplication because I need AC. AC is nine times 16, which is 144. Goes on the top and B bottom is 24. It goes here. So 144. I'm just going to make a column on this side. 1 times 44, 2 times 72, 3 times, um, 3 times 4 is 12, and then 48. 4, 36. It doesn't go on 5. Let's see if it goes on 6. Yes, it goes on 6. 6 times 2 is 12 and 6 times 4, 24. And, um, hmm, I still don't have any pair, so let me check if I can do more. 5, it doesn't go on 5. Um, 6, I already done. 7, 8. Let's see if I can divide 144 by 8. Yes, eight times 18. This looks like my pair. Because 18 plus eight is, what is 18 plus eight? Oh, 18 plus eight is 26, so that's not my pair, no. So let's check another number. nine times 16 it should not go on 10 oh it should be 12 times 12 there you go this is my pair because 12 times 12 is 24 i can do the check over here 12 times 12 is 144 and 12 plus 12 is 24. so that's my pair now um i have to divide by this number a so divide by nine and divide by nine. So when I divide by nine, I am going to actually get a fraction. So let's get that fraction. This is four third, and this is also four third because they are same numbers. Now two set of pairs, this time x plus four thirds and then x plus four thirds. I got it. So I have done till here. Now, it can't be written as a fraction form. So all you have to do is your, you multiply that three on this side, and then it is gone from here. So your, it should be three x plus four, and same on this side, three x plus four. So that's my answer. So you just move the X uh, three right next to it. So this is my answer. So if you're dividing by one, it's actually easier. If you're not dividing by one, then you actually have to include this step as well in the end. So this process is not that difficult. It's just little um, you have to pay attention to and you should be fine. I'm gonna help you with example number five. First thing I need to do is solve the X puzzle. A value is 3, so I already know I have to divide by 3. B is negative 8, and C is positive 5. A times C goes on the top, 3 times 5 is 15, and then B goes on the bottom, which is negative 8. Now I need factors of 15. 1 times 15, it doesn't go on 2, 3 times 5, and then 5 times 3. So I have to adjust here. So 3, negative 3, and negative 5. So I have negative 3 and negative 5. That's what my factors are. Again, I'm not done because pay attention. I have to divide it by 3. So both sides divide by 3. This is same negative 5 thirds, and this is basically negative 1. So you see that? Negative 3 divided by 3 actually simplifies to negative 1. So the answer sometimes gets to change 
x, this time it's a minus. So minus 1. And then this is x minus 5 thirds. You are going here. x minus 1 stays here. Now you swing it. So 3x minus 5. There you go. That's your answer. You're done with factorization. You should be able to do number 6, number 7 on your own, 8, 9. You should be able to do all of them by your own. Um, 10, 11, 12. I'm going to help you with 11, and then you can do 12 by yourself, and then one more. So let me help you with 11. A, B, sorry, B and C goes here. So A is the one X squared, so this is 4. B, there is no X, it's a 0. And C is negative 9. So A, C on the top is 4 times negative 3 is negative 6, and bottom is 0. Help. Oh. I have pairs of 36, 1 times 36, 2 times 18, 3 times 12, this is 4 times 9, 6 times 6. So it has to be 6 times 6 because 6 times 6 is 36, and 6 minus 6 is a 0, so it's 6 minus 6. Now, Go back and look at the A value, which is 4. So you have to divide this by 4 on both sides, which leaves you with negative 3 over 2 and positive 3 over 2. Now write the factors in the parentheses. It should be x plus 3 over 2 and x minus 3 over 2. Because this is positive and that's negative. I'm not done yet because I have a fraction, so I have to swing it. So it should be 2x plus 3 and 2x minus 3. And this is my answer. Similar way, you should be able to do number um, 12. And I'm going to help you with number 13 because those are very big numbers. So let me just help you with number 13. A is 4. B is 12. C is negative 135. Wow, that's big numbers. So for my X puzzle, I need two numbers that goes on the top, uh, 4 times 135 is 540, and then B is actually 12, that's minus. And this X puzzle is actually going to take a little longer to solve, because I need 540 on the top but the difference is 12 so it has to be two numbers that are close to each other so i'm gonna choose i'm not gonna try small numbers i'm just gonna try big numbers and see how it goes so i'm gonna start with 540 divided by probably 15. so if i had 15 times 36 the difference is 21. So I have to try further. 18 times 30. That's 12. There you go. I got it. So 18 and 30 goes here and I have to adjust the sign. I need a positive number and negative on the top. So smaller number must be negative. There you go. Minus 18 and 30. I'm not done yet because I have to divide these by the 4. 
And once you divide, all you have to do is just simplify in your calculator what is the fraction that you get. You get 9 over 2 here, so this is 9 over 2. And 30 divided by 4 is 15 over 2. 7.5. So there you go. So x minus 9 over 2 and x plus 15 over 2. Next step, I have to just swing it. So it is 2x minus 9 and this is 2x plus 15 and there you go. This is my answer. So basically, I'm using the X puzzle that you already um, are familiar with. I did not see any example on this one where you actually have to find a greatest common factor. Sometimes you have to actually do that as well. So I did not see any example on this one. All right, beware, not all polynomials can be factored. Sometimes you won't be able to find two numbers that multiply to AC and add to B. So sometimes you're not going to find the numbers because it's not possible. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write my numbers. A is one, B is negative six, and C is seven. So AC is seven and B is negative six. I'm going to factor the 7, which is 1 times 7. So 1 multiply 7 is 7, but 1 minus 7 is minus 6. So actually it works. Um, no, it doesn't work. Because it, if I put a minus here, it, I have to put a minus here so it does not work. So this doesn't work. And there are no other factors. So no, it doesn't have any factors. So you have to write no factors because it's impossible. There's no other pair that is going to work. So this way you can try these two. All you have to do is include this step. So this way you will know. You have a bunch of questions on these notes that you have to finish. So go ahead, finish those. Um, so you actually understand how to do it. And then um, finish this circuit training as your homework. If you're unable to finish it during the lesson right now.